Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to this morning's service. Let us respond to the call to worship responsively. God answers our prayers and protects us in a day of trouble. Some take pride in what they can see and hear, but we take pride in God's activity in our lives. This gives us good reason to shout with joy, for we believe that when we call upon the Lord, our prayers are heard and answered. Let us worship God with gladness and joy. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, you give us cause to sing your praises, for you bless our lives each and every day. Sometimes in small and what might seem to be, at the time, almost insignificant ways. Other times, blessings are so evident that we cannot keep quiet about them. You hear us when we call to you and answer us according to your love, wisdom and grace, always doing what is best for our lives. We have done nothing to deserve such blessings. We can only thank you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now enter into a time of praise. Dear people, Jesus Christ loves you. His love is beyond what anyone can give you. His love is so wide, so long, so high and so deep that only God himself has the power to make us grasp its measure. Let us now cast aside every distraction, doubt and disappointment and come to Jesus. Let us give thanks to him for what he has done for us on the cross. Oh. 
As we prepare our hearts to hear the word of God proclaimed, let us pray together the prayer of illumination. God of light and life, open our eyes as well as our ears, so that we may not only hear your word preached today, but then see your word lift out in our lives and in your world today. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may, may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare our hearts to hear from God through the preaching of his word, let us sing the hymn of preparation. Take time to be holy. Feed on his word, make friends of 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, blessed Sunday. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let's go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for us gathering together here for worship. And now, O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name. Amen. It is interesting to know that this COVID pandemic has increased Google web searches and other internet web searches for prayer. According to a research done, one of the most common prayer-related searches was coronavirus prayer. One can find an array of prayers that ask God for protection against the coronavirus, to stay strong, and to thank doctors, nurses, medical staff, and others. A research paper entitled In Crisis We Pray, Religious City and the COVID-19 Pandemic by Jeanette Sinding Benson. She writes, I quote, the rise in prayer intensity supersedes what the world has seen for years and may likely continue to rise as the crisis worsens. Today's scripture lesson on Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 21 is a pastoral prayer by the Apostle Paul for the churches in Ephesus. According to biblical history, Paul wrote the Ephesian epistle while he was in prison in Rome. Paul wrote this letter to the believers in Ephesus to remind them to remain strong and resolute in their allegiance to Christ as the supreme power in the world and also in their lives amid the occult and magic practices that they encounter. If you have read or studied Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 21 is Paul's second prayer. His first prayer is stated in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 to 23. Let me read in reading Paul's powerful first prayer for our understanding. Maybe you can read together with me. Chapter 1 verse 15. For this reason... Because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? 
and what is the immeasurable greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His great might, that He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, and not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who feels all in all. Now let us look at Paul's second prayer in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Listen to his introduction. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. Notice Paul's posture in his prayer. I bow my knees. As Paul taught about the congregation and wrote this beautiful epistle, he knelt before God and prayed for the churches with great intensity. According to Jewish tradition, the normal posture for praying was standing. However, the bowing of the knees indicates an attitude of submission, of true reverence and or earnestness to God in prayer. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. He fell with his face to the ground and, and prayed. Or Stephen fell on his knees and prayed when he was stoned to death. Now there is no hard or and fast rules about the posture we should adopt to pray. But it is possible to pray kneeling, standing, sitting or walking. I like what Billy Graham said and a good strong reminder to all of us. He said, it is not the body's posture, but the heart's attitude that counts when we pray. Here we see the Apostle Paul's heart when he prayed. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. Verse 15, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. For this reason, what reason was the Apostle Paul's mind when he knelt and prayed? What was it that moved Paul's heart to pray the second time in this letter? In my previous sermon on 3rd January, which I preached on Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 13, we noticed that Paul wants the believers to see that in Christ there is no barrier or division between the Jewish and Gentile Christians. Paul, who is called to preach to the Gentiles, wants them to see and enjoy the unsearchable riches of Christ. Paul wants the Christians in Ephesus to understand and embrace the mystery hidden for ages. That mystery is that the Gentiles, every tribe and language and people and nation that includes you and me, are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and particles of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Paul wants them to be part of revealing the glory of God's wisdom against the cosmic powers over this present dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And Paul wants the church not to be discouraged or disheartened by his sufferings and imprisonment for the sake of the gospel and also for them. The basis of Paul's prayer for the churches at Ephesus was his knowledge of God's will and purpose. What God has done in Jesus Christ, the reconciling work through the cross. And therefore, Paul was deeply convicted and poured out his soul to God in prayer. He prayed that God's wonderful love, purpose and plan, which he has explained in chapters 1, 2 and 3, may be even more completely fulfilled in the believers 
experience. Let's look at the pastoral heart of Paul's prayer in verses 16 to 19. The renowned preacher and author John Stott in his writing on Ephesians stated that Paul's prayer for the church at Ephesus is like a staircase that climbs higher and higher in his aspiration for the believers there. His prayer staircase has four steps. The key words are strength, love, knowledge, and fullness. And let's look at each of these four words. First, to be strengthened by God's power through His Spirit. You know, when I was a teenager, before a game of football and, or hockey, my friends and I would do some light workout or stretching to strengthen our muscles. Or in the gym, as we carried weights, we rejoiced in flexing our biceps and, and muscles. I was proud of the six packs that I had at that time. But now I'm not so sure whether there's anything to see at all. Probably one large strong pack. But friends, the greatest strength is to be strengthened by God's power through His Spirit, having a strong heart, mind, and spirit. And this is what the Apostle Paul prayed for in verses 16 to 17. That according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit, in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. Did you notice that Paul's prayer is in Trinitarian concept? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. It is similar to our benediction at the end of our worship service or some of the prayers in our liturgy that we say at our Sunday worship services. Paul prays that the Father in heaven will strengthen the inner being of the believers with the power of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That will lead the hearts of believers becoming a dwelling place for Christ who lives permanently through faith. The strength for which Paul is praying is a spiritual strength. This kind of strength is always inward, our inner being, in our hearts. It comes according to the riches of God's glory, which is limitless and available to every believer through faith in Christ. Friends, it is important for us to pray for God to strengthen us, to carry on in our daily life, including bearing the burdens, the, the hardships, the challenges and the trials of life. It is equally important for us to pray for God to strengthen us through the Holy Spirit to overcome any kind or any form of temptations that we may encounter from time to time. We need to be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to surrender our whole life to Christ by His Spirit. Christ dwells and reigns in us and He will transform us. He will bring that transformation in us. And that is Paul's prayer for the believers in Ephesus and also for us too, to be strengthened by God's power through His Spirit. Secondly, to be rooted and grounded in God's love. Let's look at verse 17 again. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. If Christ dwells within us, we indeed shall be rooted and grounded in love. In this prayer, there are two metaphors that Paul uses. One botanical, rooted, and the other architectural, grounded. We shall be like tree whose roots are rooted in love. We shall be like a house whose foundation is grounded in love. 
In both of these metaphors, the unseen cause of the stability of the believers will be the same. That is love. Love is to be the soil in which our life is to be rooted deeply. Love is to be the foundation on which our life is built on. The power of God's strength and the indwelling of Christ enables you and me to love each other deeply and firmly. And this crosses all racial and cultural barriers. A wonderful and powerful statement that is greatly needed today. To be rooted and grounded in God's love breaks all racism and prejudice against others. And this is Paul's prayer for the believers in Ephesus. And this must be our prayer for our church and for one another. Thirdly, to know Christ's love in his full dimension. In verses 18 to 19, Paul prayed that the believers may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul acknowledges that we need to know Christ's love. It is also by loving one another that we come to know the true meaning of Christ's love. Christ's love is wide enough to embrace all people, both Jews and Gentiles, coming together. Christ's love is long enough to last forever. For eternity, Christ's love is deep enough to reach down to the lower sinner. Christ's love is high enough to lift the sinner up. A New Testament scholar, Leslie Milton, wrote this. Whether you go forward or backward, up to the heights or down to the depths, nothing, nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote these words in his Roman epistle in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 to 39. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul bow his knees. He prays with intensity. He prays that the believers at Ephesus might not only understand how great Christ's love is, but they might also know his love deeply. That is that they might experience Christ's love in their lives together as a community of faith. And that includes their respective families too. Christ's love is so wide, so long, so deep, and so high that it surpasses knowledge. It means that it cannot be completely known. It is beyond knowing. No matter how much we may know the love of Christ or experience His love in our hearts, there's always more to know. And this will keep us humble at all times. And this is Paul's prayer for the believers in Ephesus. To know Christ's love in his full dimension. Fourthly, to be filled with the fullness of God. Let's look at verse 19. And to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul prayed that the believers in Christ are to grow to be filled with the fullness of God. What is it like to be filled with all the fullness of God? 
It includes receiving every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, the future heavenly blessings in glory. It includes knowing the riches of God's glorious inheritance for His people. It includes God's immeasurable greatness of His power toward us who believe in Christ. It includes the understanding of God's unsearchable riches of Christ's death and resurrection, our reconciliation with God, which is the end of hostility and the beginning of peace and being part of His kingdom. It also includes experiencing God's great love, which He has poured out into our hearts by His Spirit. Paul prays that the believers will be deeply rooted like a tree, grounded like a building in love, and thus grow to be filled with all the fullness of God. This is Christian discipleship growth and maturity for all who follow Christ, for all who believe in Christ, for all who obey Christ's commands. We can experience the fullness and the greatness of God in our lives as a result of our total devotion, of our commitment, of our obedience and our submission to Him. So, Brothers and sisters in Christ, let me remind you again and again. It is important for you to grow in Christ through the reading of the Bible daily. It is important. It is important for you to pray persistently, to come together to worship regularly, and also having this deep fellowship with fellow believers to the small groups and other ministry meetings. Never miss out these important spiritual disciplines, my dear friends. I want you to say to the person next to you, if there's a person next to you, never miss out these important spiritual disciplines. Let it be our constant prayer for our church, and for our, each other, that we might grow and be filled with all the fullness of God. Like the Apostle Paul, who prayed with great intensity, we should earnestly pray that our inner being, our hearts are strengthened to the Holy Spirit and filled with Christ's ruling presence and love. We should earnestly pray that we are rooted and grounded in God's love. We should earnestly pray that we may know Christ's love in His full dimension. We should earnestly pray that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. What an empowering prayer by the Apostle Paul for God's people at Ephesus and including us too. Paul ends his powerful prayer with a praise thanks, with a praise thanksgiving, a doxology. Let's look at verses 20 21. Paul says this Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. As Paul reflects, as Paul prays and think on the fullness of God in the church, he affirms that God, that God is able to do far more abundantly or could ever imagine bringing these two irreconcilable groups, the Jews, and the Gentiles together in one body, enabling them to love deeply, to love firmly, and to work together as fellow members of the same body. This was possible because God is able to do far more abundantly. My dear friends, let us be reminded there is no limit what God can do for you and for me. 
He is able to do far more than, than we can ask, more than we can ever imagine. God's power that is at work within us. It is the power of His resurrection, the power by which Christ is raised from the dead and ascended into heaven. This is the power that is at work within the church. Do we believe it? Do you believe it? Brothers and in Christ, God is sovereign. God is indeed great. And to Him be the glory in the church to all generations, to all ages of the ages, now and forever and ever in eternity. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, we bow our hearts before you this day. Please strengthen us in our innermost being through your Spirit and dwell in our hearts through faith in Jesus Christ. May we always be rooted and grounded in God's love, whose love is beyond all knowledge. Help us comprehend even in the smallest part of the beautiful mystery of your grace and grant that we may experience the fullness of your presence with us today and forever. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, please join me as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day, he rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Listen, let us say the offertory prayer. God, you are our great joy. Thank you for always encouraging us to draw near to you in prayer and worship. In times of trouble or concern, we find hope and peace in your presence. Guide us to share the warmth and good news of your love with people in our wider community. Receive his tithes and offerings in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
Let us enter a time of holy communion. And hear these words of invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbours. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we are yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us now offer one another signs of reconciliation, love and peace. The peace of God be with you. The great thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which our Lord Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, our Lord took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these almighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Our Heavenly Father, we beseech you that you please pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here at our homes and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, 
and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed is in Christ, the body of Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Take and eat it, and be thankful. The blood of Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you. Take and drink it, and be thankful. Let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Our gracious God, we thank you for reminding us of Jesus. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for what Jesus has done to redeem us and to save us. And as we come with thankful hearts, help us, Lord, to love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And help us, Lord, to love one another and love our neighbors. For this we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let us watch the recorded Sunday School Bible presentation, which was held on 17th January. So friends, uh, let's enter into the time uh, of service. And let's listen to these words. Receive the word of God, learn its stories, and study its words. Its stories belong to us all, and these words speak to us all. They tell us who we are, they tell us that we belong to one another, for we are the people of God. Children, get the rest. Yeah, you can see. What, last year, your, we your... receive these Bibles with our hands, our hearts, and our minds. Thank you. We will read and study the Bible together. Okay, the rest, congregation, LCC members, can you respond? We rejoice in, in your journey with God. We pray for you, your family, and us as we use the Bible in your church, in our classes, and in our worship. We will learn together and in our love of God's the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thanks to be God. Amen. Amen. Be thanks be to God. Now let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, blessed be your wonderful name. You are the source of every blessing. 
and you have revealed yourself, your truth, and your ways to us through your word, the Bible. Please look with delight upon these children today as they receive your word and be committed to read and to remember you in the gospel stories of salvation. Help them to absorb its wisdom and to grow to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Encourage them with the help of the Holy Spirit to use your words for their prayer and inspiration, for the increase of their faith and devotion, and for the building up of your kingdom. Through your word, may they be transformed into the very likeness of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. 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 So children, you want to lift up your Bibles in front of you and to show to the screen.